your car already has a spot for a boost gauge and it's absolutely free. So I have my vent cover here. You can actually buy one that's already got the gauge in it, but I wanted to make my own. I think I can do it. Shouldn't be that hard. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do, I think, is remove... Here you go. Oh, thank you. Oh, I don't know. Do I need to remove Here these, you think? You what do you think? I'm gonna take these out. Uh -huh. Two suckers? You need two of them right now? Mm -hmm. Look at that one. It's got like a couple colors in it. Mm, okay. Mm, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna remove these fins back here so that it's easier to cut my circle out. I'm not gonna need them, so. Let's see. All I'm gonna be using, I think, I may have to get my Dremel out, but I think all I'm gonna need to use are these diagonal pliers. Diagonal pliers? Yeah, diagonal. Diagonal. Whoop, sorry dude. Whoa! Whoa. You taught me! I got you. Okay. Cool. Pretty cool. Now we'll open this. I got this gauge. It's a Turbo Smart gauge. I don't have any affiliation with them. The reviews were pretty decent, and it's not very expensive. And it matches. It matches the Audi gauges, so I felt like it would be a good option. What do you think? And then this. This is just a shroud. This looks like it's going to be a pretty good fit. I'll link this gauge in the description in case you're doing this on this exact car, because that is going to fit pretty much perfectly in there. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to center this as much as possible and then trace it. Dude. Does that not hurt your teeth? No? That should do it. Now from here, I'm just going to start cutting these out with the diagonal pliers. Cut pretty small and then step it up. All right, so that is my new gauge holder. Um, I only used these angle clippers and or diagonal pliers and sandpaper. This is a really rough grit. This is the sandpaper I used to sand my floors when I refinished them. So it's like a, it's like a 30, I think it says 38 grit, so very rough. But I just used that to kind of file back the plastic so this would fit. And it's a really snug fit, so I'll show you guys. And then I'll push the gauge in. I think it looks pretty good. So that's our new gauge pod. Um, I'm really happy with this. Obviously, I'm gonna have to glue it. So I'm gonna use hot glue, I think, to glue this plastic bezel in. That way the gauge can go in and out. So I think this thing came out really great. It's not perfect. I think with a little more time, maybe some higher end tools, uh, you could get a little bit better result. But with a set of diagonal pliers, which is a couple dollars at Harbor Freight, and some 30 grit sandpaper, which is the same a couple dollars, I made a really cool gauge pod. And this kind of pod typically costs like 80 bucks for like a vent pod for a specific model. So you can save yourself a ton of money and have a really cool spot for your gauges. So let's go put this thing in. All right. Let's see. Yeah, something like that. Looks really cool. So you might have noticed we got new merch. I got this shirt, which is my favorite shirt to date. It's got a built logo on the front, MR2 on the back, and I love this shirt. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be working in it a lot because, well, it's white and this car will make it black in no time. We sold out of the black shirts, the black uh, built shirts with the white logo, those are gone. But we've got this shirt and then another black shirt for you guys that like to work in your built shirts with the MR2 on it as well. And then you guys have seen these hats. These hats are in the store also. Every single dollar you spend on built merch 
goes to building these cars to give away. They don't go to me. Um, all the profit goes into this car. And, well, all the profit from the channel goes into this car right now. But it all goes into this car, so it's all going to be given away. It just helps us get these builds done faster. So thank you guys so much to everybody that bought a jet tag and t-shirt and stickers during our big sale. We got new stuff now, and I think it's really rad. Dan Santana from Eurospec Bodega actually designed these shirts, and he said he's willing to do designs for you guys. If you got a channel or a brand, or you just want custom shirts designed for your car, or for your business, or whatever, check him out. I want to put his Instagram in the description below. All right, back to the boost gauge. For these boost gauge, you have to run off of manifold pressure. So the pressure that's in the manifold, that's the most accurate pressure that is in the engine. So. A lot of you guys will not have all of the vacuum stuff done that I've got done. What you normally will need to do is tee in right here um, off of this port, and then you can run that into the car. What I'm going to do is I have a port that's not being used that's actually a leak down there, and I'm going to put my vacuum line on that port and then run it underneath the manifold. I'm going to come up through this grommet. I'm just going to punch a hole in it and run that through there, and then through there's a grommet down here that's not being used. And that'll come up underneath my dash and then we can run it where we're gonna run it. With the kick panel off, I've got a wire fed through there. I'm going to try to grab it and pull it down into here. I don't know if I'm going to film it, but I'll try. Look, it's just above the steering column. You can see the light coming through right there. That's our new hole. So we'll run, we'll run the vacuum line this way away from the steering column and up into our new spot. So you see it runs up through here and then underneath there and we've got this grommet that it's already running through. I just put the grommet on the wire. So we'll plug that in and we are done with this side. So I'm gonna pull this whole assembly out. I didn't realize that it just pops out like that and unplugs, and that's gonna give us a space to route our vacuum line. All right, so I just soldered a whole bunch of wire onto the back of my boost gauge. I'm gonna try to feed it through the same hole as the vacuum tube. I kind of forgot about it actually, so I'm gonna have to pull this out again and try to feed that wire through there. Hopefully it'll go through there and we'll be good to go. Hey dude. What's... What are you doing in here? I am putting in a boost gauge. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna get in with you. You wanna get in with me? Okay. I was planning on using hot glue to mount this gauge in, but I can't find my hot glue gun because my shop is a mess. So I'm going to use some quick weld, just JV weld stuff. And it's not actually going to hold the gauge, it'll hold the bezel inside of the vent. Okay, so the JV weld has had time to sit up. This is all one piece now, so I'll put the gauge in. It's a pretty tight fit, so I'm not going to use any sort of like clamping device on the back of the gauge. I just don't think it's necessary in this application. So I had to refeed these wires because I didn't feed them through the past plastic bezel. So we'll try this again. Maybe I can get a little more lucky this time. I'm going to braid them together. So I pulled this 15 amp fuse for the cigarette lighter. That's what I'm gonna try first. I'm just gonna wrap the wire around it and plug it back in, see if that works. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna connect it to my radio fuse, which is 20 amp. Um, I've got a few that I'm gonna try, but I'm gonna bump it around and see if I can get it to come on with the lights and all that kind of stuff. If not, I'll just run it constant. Um, but I don't wanna delve into the whole headlight switch kind of deal because these switches are a little bit finicky. They tend to go bad, and I just don't want to mess with them. So I'm going to plug into the fuse box here. There's cleaner ways to do it, but this way works, so that's what I'm going to do. I 
I'm actually very impressed how quickly this boost gauge responds. The one on my MR2 is not this fast. I don't know if it's an electronic or what, but this thing is like quick. That was an ambulance. 